The Money Trap. I'm talking about the money trap. Now I do have to be a little bit careful when I'm talking about this because it's not intended, this is a short video and it's not intended as financial advice. The first thing I want to talk about is the value of money and I have here an example of the value of money. So this is a £10 note, a new £10 note that everybody will be familiar with and this is a 10 shilling note um, which stopped being issued in 1970, so when I was a small boy. And for those younger than me, um, you probably won't know what it is, but a 10 shilling note is worth 50p now, so it's half a pound. To me, one of the most interesting things about these is how similar they look. It's the same colour, it's got a 10 written all over it, the Queen doesn't even look all that different. But one is the equivalent of 50p, and one is the, you know, is actually 10 pounds. And the other question that's quite interesting is uh, which is the most valuable? So this 10 shilling note, you need a 36 of those to buy an ounce of gold, whereas you need about 100 of these 10 pound notes. So the uh, 10 bob note is a lot more valuable in that context. Or well, thinking more practically, a 10 shilling note would buy you five pints of beer or maybe a little bit more, whereas a 10 pound note, well, in, in Staleybridge, it might buy you three pints of beer, but, well, in London, a pint and a half of beer or something. So again, the, uh, the 10 shilling note is a lot more valuable. So 50p here has turned into less than 10 pounds, and that, over long periods of time, that's sort of what's happened to money, that it becomes almost worthless. It's a bit like the ageing process. Now I live in a time where I assume that I'm not getting older because you know I do some exercise and I eat reasonably healthily so I imagine I'm not getting older. However, I went to the hospital recently and on the way back, um, the taxi driver asked me, you know, did, are you looking forward to Christmas? Um, and I said, yeah, I'm looking forward to Christmas. And he said, well, that's surprising because a lot of the elderly people um, don't look forward to Christmas. And I thought, well, that's it, isn't it? Um, if a taxi driver is calling you elderly, then the truth is out. The value of money is a little bit like the aging process. As you look in the mirror every day and as you look in your bank account every day, there's no difference to the value of money, no appreciable difference. But over a long period of times, that process does take place. 3% um, inflation, which is what we've got at the moment, over 20 years, halves the value of your money over the 20 years. And that is the money trap, because like, if you put all your money into your bank account and just leave it there and hope that that'll be enough to live on in retirement, you know, to spend on in 30, 40, 50 years time, then you might be disappointed because the drip, drip, drip um, of inflation can destroy the value of money. When thinking about long-term financial planning, and the value of money. I think the drip, drip, drip of inflation is essential to make sure that, uh, that you meet your financial goals and that you have enough to live on in retirement. Now money is really useful. I'm not saying um, that money is not useful. Money is really useful. It's really good if you, you know, like if you want to go to the pub for a pint of beer. It's really good as a means of exchange. It's really good at that. And it's also really important to have some money on one side um, as a financial buffer um, so if bad things happen, you can pay your bills. And it's also really handy, you know, if there was going to be a property crash next year or something, um, then having some cash so you can take advantage of that would be really good. What it's really bad at is a, is a store of value over the very long term. So if you're looking at long term financial planning, then money isn't necessarily going to be a great store of value. In order to, for you to think that it could um, store value over the long term, you've got to trust the government very, very heavily and very implicitly. And good luck with that. So what can you invest in? Oh, it's all a bit negative, isn't it? So what can you invest in? Well, to my mind, um, there are sort of five main things that you can invest in. So we talked about cash. You can look at debt, which is either government debt or corporate debt, where you lend money to somebody and then they they give it back after a period of time. That is still sort of like cash in that you have that drip, drip, drip of inflation going on to, to devalue it. Um, investing in businesses, either your own business or on the stock exchange, is also recognized as a long-term uh, way of, uh, of providing for yourself. Um, property, both commercial property and domestic property, uh, houses, buy to let, all that sort of thing. That is uh, very popular at the moment, I know. Um, and then there is, you know, you know, this, this, this 10 bob note 
could buy, 36 of these could buy an ounce of gold, whereas um, 100 of these is, is needed to buy an ounce of gold. So, so valuables um, of, of all sorts can also be a form of investment. If you want to talk about your financial affairs, then I'll be very happy to talk to you. Um, please get in touch and also please feel free to comment, press the bell button um, or subscribe to my channel. That'd be great and it helps me. Thank you.